Wow. <laughs> well, thank you, folks, for tuning in. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this episode today uh, of Encounters with God. We have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Doyle Dykes, uh, just an awesome friend, great guitar player, loves the Lord. And, um, you know, we like to interview people who have had encounters with God. You know, just like the scriptures that we read every day. You know, these men and women, they didn't have a Bible. They heard from God. They walked with God. They talked with God. All of the people in Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith, you know, those people had an experience with God. And through their experience with God, it was recorded and then that later became what we call the scriptures of the Bible. So God wants us to have encounters with him today, I believe. You know, the Holy Spirit is to lead and guide and direct us. And uh, the word of God was never meant to replace a direct experience or an encounter with God in your life. And so uh, that's what we wish for you today. And so welcome, my good friend, Doyle. Man, it is. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. It's such great a to pleasure, be here. A pleasure to be with, with yeah. you today. And well, you're my friend. And, you know, we, we get in touch with each other whether we're doing anything like this or not. I mean, we're just, we've been friends a long time now. Amen. And it's, it's been such an enriching friendship with you. I, I always learn uh, more about the ways of the Lord, uh, the ways of God. And, um, uh, see how God works in your life and continues to work in your life, not in a past tense. We'll talk about some things in the past where you've had specific encounters with the Lord that were uh, kind of crossroads events where God brought you through certain things. But uh, Yes. Yeah. So He's good to us. Amen. amen. Like my mama says, I wouldn't want to live without him. <laughs> no. I said, well, I can't imagine that. And the, the good thing is you'll never have to live without him. He said, I'll yes. never leave you or forsake you. And he's all, always there with us. Yes. You know, I've traveled the world, Ken, and I've laid my head on pillows around the world by myself, you know. And I sometimes I just say, Lord, I thank you that you are with me. Thank you that you're right here. Sometimes I'll take a pillow of my other arm. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hmm. I said, my family may not be here, but Lord, I know you're here with me and I was directed here. And I thank you for your presence here with me. And, you know, and that always kept the, even though uh, I might be homesick sometimes, yes. but I'm never lonely. Right. There's a big difference there, Ken. So, you know, loneliness is a sad thing, and it's, a, it's emptiness inside. Yeah. But when you have the Lord in you, you don't have to be lonely because right. he said, I'll, I'm always there. I'll right. always be with you. That's a yeah. good, that's a good feeling. Yes, I love the scripture. I think it's John 14, 23. Jesus said, if you love me, the Father and I will come make our abode with you. That's right. We will come in. You know, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. uh, when other people may, or we may be in different situations where it doesn't look good, but God is always there. He indeed uh, is. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, well, let's, let's start at the beginning, Doyle. I know that uh, that probably goes back a few years, but yeah. uh, just for the people there, just for the record, I know you were raised in a Christian home. Yes. Uh, you grew up musically around people that love the Lord. Right. And, uh, you know, they had an appreciation for music and for God and mm -hmm. uh, things that we could call sacred. So tell us a little bit about that, where you were born and in and, and that area. Yeah, okay. Well, I was born in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, I'm about, I don't know, fourth or fifth generation Floridian that I know of, maybe even more. My granddad was uh, from a, a, a big metropolis called Two Egg, Florida. That was the name. Of it. <laughs> it was outside of Mariana, and some of you may know Two Egg. If you if you say I know where that is, mm, I'd <laughs> boy, then you get around. Let me tell you, because not too many people do. But uh, granddad uh, moved to Jacksonville, and that's where my dad was born. That's where I was born, my brother. And so it's only my brother, Aubrey, and myself and our family. Of course, mom and dad. And uh, uh, on dad's side, he was a guitar player. Uh, and then his dad was the choir director, grandpa. I called him Papa Dykes. 
He was the choir director at our church for 33 years. And everybody knew our family and our denomination and also in the Baptists or the Assemblies of God or any Christian churches. They all knew us from, from music in Jacksonville and even different parts of the state and Georgia. And my uncle, was a, his brother, was a great organist. His sister was a great pianist. And people like the Blackwood Brothers, uh, back when I played with the Stamps Quartet, and they said, well, I heard Galia was your aunt. You know, and they knew her, and they knew my uncle Ronnie. Boy, he could play that organ. And so uh, even though they didn't get into professional music like that, people knew them from that. And my granddad, like I said, for 33 years was a choir director at our church. And so that's my dad's side. Now, my mom's side. Uh, it was more country. Uh, my uncle was a country singer. And uh, in fact, he had a guitar just like this. And uh, this is a Martin D45. It's a really good one here. Ken, I don't think you've ever seen this one. Mm, I just, just got it. Yeah, it's a, it's a copy of the pre-war, which is what he had. He left that guitar to me. And uh, he... The 1939? Yes. Reward. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And so uh, this was uh, when I felt the neck on it just just a few weeks ago. I said that that's it. It's a, it, it plays exactly like Uncle Doyle's. And so he was a huge influence on my life as well. Great entertainer. Uh, everybody from little Jimmy Dickens to Eddie Arnold to I mean they all knew my Uncle Doyle. Roy Clark was very very close to him. Billy Grammer, um, and then of course Grandpa Jones who I ended up working with later. Right. Roy Clark told me one time, he says, you know, you're, you and I have uh, something in common as far as our, our past and our jobs and our careers. He said, our first good job was with Grandpa Jones. He said, that was my first job too. I said, no kidding. And uh, he said, well, your uncle got me the job. And so that was my mother's brother. And there's more to that than, than, than just that, but that's what, you know. But I never really got into music um, until I got saved. I was 11 years old. Even though I was raised in church, we had uh, Sunday morning, Sunday, you know, Sunday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting, Friday night youth service, YPE. And uh, I mean, life, our life was centered around the church. It was. Yes. I mean, our, our, uh, uh, the song I played at the beginning is they, all those songs sounded a lot, of, you know, the similar. You know, our YPE was We Are the Young. And so it was like, a, a, you know, Holy Ghost kind of, you know, that kind of we will fight for right forever and we will take our stand for holiness. Yeah. Things like that that you, would, you don't hear in songs like that too much anymore. They were politically incorrect, I guess. Onward Christian soldiers fighting as to war and, yeah. and uh, you know, a lot of other songs that we did. Uh, keep on the firing line. You know, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Yeah. So I grew up around that stuff. But when I got saved, at 11 years old, I knew for the first time in my knower that I was saved, and I raised my hands to the Lord. Nobody told me to, but uh, the day I got, the night I got saved, I raised my hands to the Lord. I said, God, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you. And uh, somebody asked me the other day, you know, I didn't know I'd be using my hands all those years. They said, uh, are your fingers insured? <laughs> and I said, no, they're on Medicare now. Though. Does that count? <laughs> so I've been doing it a long time. Yes. Yeah, awesome. So you surrendered to the Lord and, and uh, uh, you were actually a piano player at this time. You were taking piano lessons and that really wasn't what you wanted to do, but God kind of put it in your heart, the guitar. He did. It was really yeah. what you wanted to do. And uh, if I remember, you were kind of struggling, didn't want to go to piano lessons. You know, the, go the guitar was the cool thing. And, yeah. I hated it because mom, uh, she worked a second, uh, another job really, sold Avon products, you know, Avon, uh, and just to afford, uh, you know, music lessons for my brother and I. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took off. I mean, Papa would use him when he was just, you couldn't even hardly see his, 
eyes over the music stand on the organ or piano, you know. This he was just awesome. a little guy. He was so good at a young age. And uh, and that can be very discouraging for a sibling, you know, right. and I'm struggling to get it. And uh, But Dad played guitar, and, and it just struck right after I said that. A few days later, I said, I want to be a guitar player. I want to play guitar. And, uh, of course, Dad, I mean, from the time we were little kids, Mom and Dad would put us in these folding chairs. And uh, they'd always put one microphone, and it looked like my fist. You know, it was, we called it the Elvis mic. You remember the yes. old Shure microphones, you know? And, uh, and, and Dad would have his old gold top, and Mom would be, Dad would normally be over there. Mom would be over here, and Aubrey and me, uh, Aubrey and I would be in the middle, and he goes. I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. And that's the way Dad played. He played with a flat pick, a Les Paul style. And uh, so we would sing, and my brother could sing like a sparrow. I mean, he just had this voice. So he had all the talent, it seemed to me. But when I got saved and started playing the guitar, I knew that was what I was supposed to do. And you had a, you were in uh, Florida, a pastor, your dad was pastor of a church, and uh -huh. as God would have it, or some people would say coincidence, whatever. You had someone come along. You were trying to play Merle and Chet, trying to figure out listening. You know, how, how are they getting that sound? Yeah, and, well, uh, is it I Barry was the trying. Sailor, was it? Yeah. It was Barry the Barry Lackey? Is yeah, it? well, you have a great memory. You, you, might, you, might, you might tell the story. You probably remember more than I can. But yeah, I, I always try to, you know. And then here comes, that's what I would try to, I'd go home and listen to uh, Chet Atkins and Merle Travis and all these guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, those were my heroes, Les and Les Paul. Sure. But I couldn't figure out how to, I could get, the, I could figure that kind of stuff, but the finger picking. And so uh, Dad wasn't actually the pastor, but he, we, of course, we were so involved and he played the guitar at church all the time. Right. And uh, uh, this sailor came and he asked my, my dad, I said, can I play your guitar? It was after church. And he starts doing that. And he started doing this Merle Travis. to my mom. I said, Mama, Mama, she was talking to someone in, in the church in the back, you know, and I said, can we have that sailor up there playing dad's yeah. guitar? Can we have him over for dinner? Yeah. And he taught me this simple, just a little exercise, but it, it got my thumb in the right place, you know, because your thumb, it's like, a, like playing a stride piano can, you know, where uh, on your left hand you're doing... You know, like doom, blah, boom, blah, boom, blah, boom. You know, and and uh, this little. Uh, he called it uh, spider picking, didn't he? Dad called it spider picking. Spider picking. Yeah, you're yeah. amazing. I can't Getting believe you all remember the, all that. The fingers are going. <laughs> Nobody called it spider picking but my dad. I mean, I, maybe he got it from somebody. But uh, year, it was years later uh, when I learned, and, and I got pretty good at it, you know, then Dad said, can you show me what that sailor showed you? And Ken, from that time, from that day on, uh, he was a thumber till he died. He, he had a thumb pick on, and so he loved it. And uh, I'm not saying it's the best style, but it, it served me well, and, and I love it, and, and it helps me to be able to be a solo guitar player. Yes. You know? You create such a rich sound. Well, you, I appreciate it's that. It's kind of a piano-esque type sound with uh -huh. the guitar, the way all of the chords are working and the fingers are working yeah. on that and the harmonics. Uh, and well, it is, absolutely. And, of course, through the years, I've kind of developed a few things of my own. And yeah. uh, but, but, you know, what, it, I always kind of took it like you have a, like you're playing with a... 
detune a little bit. In like a... And I remember the story that kind of follows up with that kind of chronologically, I guess, is uh, you were walking home from school mm -hmm. and probably you weren't expecting this. Your dad, uh, um, like you're walking down the road, your dad picks you up in the car mm -hmm. and says, hey, get in, son. We're going to we're going to go uh, downtown with it. Downtown Jacksonville. Downtown. Fred Paula's music store. Paula's music store. And uh, mm -hmm. Your expectation that day was probably pretty low. I think you had a, yeah. a Silverstone guitar, was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, silver, silver Tone. Silver yeah. Tone, that's right. Right out of Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> right, yes, yes, uh, one of those high dollar guitars. <laughs> but uh, really what struck me about that is you were walking around the store mm -hmm. and your dad knew that there was something in you. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he had seen you practice and develop yeah. and, and put some time in. And so... Mm -hmm. You walked up to the counter, if I remember right, and uh, t tell me the rest of the story there. Well, I, you know, I had a busted a key on my little, it had a little plastic key, and I set it against the wall, and it broke. And I'm going, oh, no. So I'd have to tune it with my dad's pliers. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah. And, of course, <laughs> running in and out of the garage all the time, because I always had to take them, put them back where I got them. Yes. And uh, dad would let me play his, little, his gold top at times, but... But it was electric, and I, I had this little acoustic guitar, and uh, he said, I have your guitar fixed up for you. And he picked me up at school, or you know, when I was walking, and, and uh, I was looking at all these great guitars. Back then, it was in the 60s, so I see these Vox tear, teardrop yes. shape, you know, and all these great Gibson 335s. And, uh, oh, my Probably Lord. just drooling, yeah. Oh, if yeah. If only I, I could have those. <laughs> but, but Dad uh, said, come on over here, son, and... Uh, and he opened up a case and it was a brand new J45 Gibson guitar. Wow. And that, that was a sacrifice for mom and dad. But you know, you're in the investment business and uh, you know, uh, unless you see the value in something, you won't invest in it. I love that quote. Yeah, but, yeah. They, but they saw the value in my gift and, uh, and we should look for more of that in our, in our kids and our grandkids and yes. invest in them and don't make them just of course, they don't have paper routes anymore, I don't guess, but back in the day, well, I bought that with my paper route. That's what all the other kids would say, but I didn't buy that with a paper route. You know, mom and dad said, well, we'd rather you spend that time on the guitar. Yeah. And so they bought the guitar for me, and believe me, I practice every day. It's funny, because, you know, Jacksonville's were, uh, you know, and 
And uh, yeah, Leonard Skinner. And uh, so when I was, and also 38 Special, a great yes. band. And Jeff Carlisi came to hear me play a couple of weeks ago. I was playing at a festival in St. Augustine, Florida. And he came out, uh, it was a Gamble Rogers festival. And uh, Gamble was a great guitar player, good friends with uh, Jim Stafford, some of my friends. Yes. And they all uh, used to talk about what a great guy he was. Here I am at his, at his uh, festival. And uh, I said, you know, m most of my friends would go home and they'd listen to Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Free and all the bands back yes. then, you know. And, but not me. I said, it was all, you know, always... And uh, as always, Chet Atkins and Merle Travis, those guys, that was my jam, you know. But I said, and they all got wealthy. They all made it big in the music business and became rock stars, but not me. And I just continued to just be dull, little dull dykes and playing in churches and doing what I did, you know. However, Jeff Carlisi is sitting here watching me play tonight, you know. <laughs> and he cracked up, you know, because he's a real good friend of mine. And, uh, but the thing is, you know, music can carry you places that you never dreamed. And it, it has carried me to all over the world. And I'm so thankful for that. But everywhere I'd go, I would remember what I said. Lord, give me a job to do and I'll always tell people about you. So I, you know, I've, I've never failed to mention him and talk about the Lord. And, and for that, I think he's blessed my life, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Let me fast forward a few years so you're developing your skills and your talent and you're getting better and better and uh, you get a job man this is your I believe 18 years old you're with the stamps quartet yeah pretty big yeah. deal I was here. even 17 when I got the job uh, I tried out for them you know and they wanted me to come uh, and, and stay at Graceland for a, a week or yeah. actually about a month yeah. they were at Graceland I said well that's the month I graduate and, uh, but I'd also met my, uh, during that time, from the time I took that job and told them I would join them, and that was around April, March or April, that I tried out and got the job until graduation. And, uh, and I met Rita, and even though I'd seen her from the time we were kids in junior high, I never knew her. I was too shy, you know. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I thought, that's the girl I'm going to marry one day. And I knew it. So yeah. I was kind of, Wanting to, to stay away, you know, and uh, that's the only thing that would have kept me away from staying at Elvis's house, you know. <laughs> but I did, and I and I said, well, I'll be there soon enough. And uh, they said, well, get here as soon as you can. And finally, I agreed to go a week before our graduation. And I didn't stay at Elvis's house, but they they left there and went out to Texas. And I went there just in in time to to get in the in the you know their vehicles and and go out. And, uh, uh, you know, I, they sent me my diploma in the mail. And, uh, and I literally, You're well, gone. I was yeah. gone. Of course, you know, of course, I taught the, the principal's son guitar lessons. So I had, oh, you know, that's what you call godly favor. Amen. You know, <laughs> and I've had that since I was a kid. And the Lord's always given me favor. But, uh, but I didn't stay with J.D. that long. But it, it, was, uh, it was one of those times in my life that I, I just felt like I needed to make a, a decision if I was really going to follow Christ and and uh, and do what I felt in my heart to do. And it was tough to, to leave, but I, I walked away from that. Yeah, I, re I remember the story, and um, you were actually in a hotel room, I believe, in Fort Worth, Texas in 1972. Top, top floor of the Hilton top, Hotel. Top floor, and... Uh, right downtown Fort Worth. It would have been most 18-year-olds' uh, dream to at this point to meet Elvis Presley. And uh, you were in that hotel room, you'd been brought up serving the Lord. Uh, um, and you began to sense the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. And things began to unravel and you begin to fall apart a little bit about the, being comfortable around all that. Uh, and sometimes I think there's decisions that we make in life that are kind of crossroads decisions. And so if you, if you don't mind, kind of share a little bit of that if you don't mind. Well, I was, it was after the show, we all went up to, uh, and they said, Elvis, uh, we told him all about you and he, you know, wanted to meet the guy that it was our, that was JD's new guitar player. Right, right. And, uh, and then I met that day, I met James Burton. 
No, I and, know James. Uh, and we're, and I know you know James, and we're still fierce friends. In fact, I, I, uh, I tried to call him right before we got in here, yes. because uh, he he just went through a, a thing with cancer, and he they did. declared him cancer free yesterday. Yesterday, so he is rejoicing in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, even since that time, James and I have been good friends. But uh, yeah, you know, it just wasn't quite right. Some things I saw and were going on. You know, not not Elvis because he was in the next room. Yeah. The Blackwood brothers were in there and had a meeting with him. And they said, as soon as they're done, then you come in and we're just going to play music all night. You know, because Elvis liked to do that. Love gospel yeah, music. Gospel. And, and that was true. That part was very, very true. Yes. And uh, but uh, but I said, no, I don't belong here. I just don't belong here. There were some other things going on with people that were, you know, thought they were <laughs> up here. I think yes. sometimes it's funny how the people that have that status are great folks, uh -huh. but the ones under that want to be like that are yeah. it can be just difficult to deal with. Very, very difficult. And so uh, I, I left. I just walked out. And, uh, of course, I was, you know, you walk out of here, you, you'll never do anything in, in Nashville. You'll yeah. never do anything They're in the music business. You. They You're did. Out yeah. on Elvis and, mm -hmm. you know. They were mad. Watch what you do, <laughs> young man, you know. You they were pretty mad. But, uh, but you know what, I've, I've been on the Grand Ole Opry stage many times. And, I, I've, I've, like I said, I've traveled around the world. God has blessed my life. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's the king of, Jesus is the king of kings and lord yeah. of lords, you yeah. know. And uh, Elvis, he was he was the king of rock and roll for no, no doubt about that. But you know when you when you've been raised to serve Jesus and the and the uh, level. it's yeah the the end of his government there is no end. Amen. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Prince of Peace. You know, and there's nothing that can compare with him. Yeah. Nothing at all. And so I, I knew I was doing the right thing, and I left very soon after that and went home, married my high school sweetheart 49 years later. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still married to her, and, uh, and right. here I am with you, and I'm still around, still playing. And, and uh, somebody is like my wife said, when are you going to retire? I said, well, let me give you the Willie Nelson answer. And I said, <laughs> I said, Merle Haggard said on the TV show, Willie, when are you going to retire? He said, from what? <laughs> Yeah. You know, because when you love what you do, and if you think about it, how could Willie ever retire anyway? Because if he's walking down the street, he's Willie Nelson. He'll never retire from being Willie Nelson. And we'll never retire from doing the Lord's work. We can never, we might retire from our job, but we can never retire for who we are in the Lord and to be uh -huh. a witness and a light. And, and uh, so, yeah, I don't see any end to that part, but maybe I won't travel as much in a little while, but, uh, but right now, praise the Lord. Thank God for the strength and the and the grace and the open doors that He's given me. And I think it's so. To me, one of the stories in your book that really captivated me is uh, it's not that the decision you made to walk away. That was one part of it. But the decisions that we make have consequences for everybody around us. Mm -hmm. They can affect our family, our friends, our mm -hmm. loved ones, and. And uh, I mean, I know you started crying about it, but uh, Donnie Sumner, mm -hmm. uh, Donnie later was in, uh, uh, he witnessed what you did, you mm -hmm. know, the courage and the conviction it took you. We weren't going to turn your back on your values and your upbringing. And uh, Donnie was on the, the top floor of the hotel in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And he is fixing to literally end his life. He is going to jump off the building. He is, uh, was brought up like we were. I mean, he's brought up in the church and he knew, uh, he knew the Lord. And, uh, but, uh, to me, that was just kind of a full circle. You walked into a church. I believe it was in Nashville, was it? It's after I got the job with grandpa, grandpa, grandpa. Jones. And, uh, I, my pastor, said, well, I, I know, I have a good friend that pastors in Nashville. You need to visit his church. So Reed and I went over there. Had no idea Donnie Sumner was the worship leader there. And he had left, the, that's after he left, of course, the stamps. And uh, uh, he was up there singing, and he saw me. I didn't even know he saw me. Right. And, and, uh, and he said, you know, I'm my life. And he told that. And I had never heard that. Yes. Uh, because yeah. one of the things I wanted to do was try to, I heard this. I heard there was things going on, and Donnie really uh, was running from the Lord back then, and uh, and he, 
I said, well, you know, maybe I can help change them. And, uh, but after a while, I thought, I think the best way to change it is to walk away. Yes. And that's one of the biggest, one of the, probably the biggest reasons that I even left the stamps and left when I did was to, to try to be a witness. And, and uh, I you said, yeah. and well, I think I was. He says, you know, if, he said, if he can walk away, he said, my mom went to a little 18 year old guitar player and said, if he can walk away, so can I. And he went down and said that and told Elvis. And Elvis was right there in the hospital bed in his room. He said, Donnie, if I could, if I could walk away with you, I would too. Yeah, he says, definitely. right now, he said, but I, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm in this too deep. He says, people expect too much out of me. And, but it had really taken a toll on him physically, you know, and, and every, every other way. But, uh, well, I think anyway. Elvis, I think Elvis really knew too. And, you know, uh, uh, there was a, a section, I really loved how you referenced that in the book, uh, that, uh, Elvis loved gospel music and mm -hmm. kind of like when D David, would come in and play his instrument for King Saul. I think it soothed uh, Elvis's spirit and it brought him back to kind of his roots and, mm -hmm. and, and, and where he came from. And uh, throughout his life, you know, everybody makes mistakes and he got off on some things that whatever, but uh, mm -hmm. I think at his core, he really mm -hmm. uh, had a love for gospel and a love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like he told Donnie, you know, he says, I, I'm in too deep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of sad. So, yeah. so you, you left that. I did. You know, and You're, I think the danger, if, if I can interject, yeah. I think one of the dangers in any of this stuff is sometimes um, we fall in love with the music mm -hmm. and, and instead of the master. Oh, I love you it. You know, and they put the music above uh, really falling in love and dedicating uh, themselves and living for God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love music, but music is not my first love. Jesus is, yes. you know. And, uh, and, I, and I, he takes priority. I, I think God and then family, you know, of course, in, you know, church. And then, uh, and then my, my music, of course, is down there somewhere. But uh, I, you know, I think priorities are a big thing. But don't fall in, just fall in love with the, with the music, mm -hmm. you know. But you've got to go deeper than that, you yes. know, and, and get an experience with the Lord. Yes. You know, and that's what a lot of people yeah. miss. That's the anchor. If you don't have that, if you don't have that God encounter and that real experience, it's it's one thing to grow up in the church like I did and you did or Donnie did and Elvis was influenced by it. But if you don't have that personal encounter and that personal relationship, it's so easy to get off track, especially in that type of environment. When you people are looking up to you, you're on the stage, the bright lights and you know, you've you've got people. Oh, what a great show! You know, Doyle, this is so great. You know, and come come down here, and you know, we got a party waiting for you. Let's celebrate this. Uh, but yeah, you have to have that uh, that rock and that foundation. Well, and what and what you do as well. You know, I, I've I uh, have heard motivational speakers like John Maxwell. I've worked with John Maxwell. You know, he was Bob Taylor's pastor. Yes, the Taylor guitars, yes. and uh, but I've worked with him, and he said, if you want to see and find out more about how I get all of these, uh, uh, you know, principles of of uh, in business and motivation, he said, uh, meet with me after the reception, and I'll and I and, uh, and then he would share Christ. Yes. He said, and I found out that people, and I heard an old preacher say this, people don't mind the principles of Christ, wow. you know, because they love it because it works. But the but the person of Christ is a threat to their lifestyle. Yes, it is. And they haven't yet surrendered to Him, and that's the key to all of it. All of the success, everything that He taught, yeah. is to receive Him. You know, His principles work. They do. They, you know, but but receive Christ. I think most of those motivational speakers. If I study their material, a lot of it comes straight from the Bible. Oh, that's what he says. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And, you know, you can write a whole book on that. Yeah. You know, control your thought life, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. But they want to do that without the Holy Spirit and without having uh, Christ come into their hearts. Mm -hmm. 
So that's true. The whole Sermon on the Mount. I mean, you could. Yeah. That is brilliant. <laughs> it's just, yeah. and uh, it, you could say that was spontaneous, or maybe he studied for it. But no, he was Jesus. It was just <laughs> the Word. It was the Word coming forth out of him. Hallelujah. And uh, if you re if you receive that and study that, it'll work in your life. But receiving Christ and is the purpose for that all, for those principles. Amen. You know, He's the purpose. And anyway, I get off on that. But <laughs> yeah. so, moving forward a little bit more. So you find yourself you you walked away from this, and uh, you're uh, you're pastoring a church in uh, in Florida, a small church. Yeah. You're doing some odd jobs too. Some of the jobs I wouldn't want to do. I, you <laughs> yeah. were. Walking through uh, with a machete, uh, cutting some things down, and doing maybe a little plumbing work. It's, yeah, it's not probably, good for your hands for no, a guitar player. Yeah, not, not if you're going to master this and play this. And um, so that's going along. The church is starting to grow and thrive. And uh, uh, I, I uh, want to really emphasize the, or talk about the, the outlaws. Well, uh, and any outlaws. Yeah, now, it's, you're, yeah. You're here, uh -huh. and no, no offense, but at this time, you're not Doyle Dykes as we, you're kind of a nobody. You're like Ken Chin. You're, you're uh, at a church here, and uh, the, I believe the service was over, uh -huh. and Annie says Doyle. Annie Outlaw walks Annie up Annie Outlaw, yeah. I love that name. Yeah, well, I mean, would you trust anybody with a name like Annie Outlaw? I would. I would have <laughs> she to. She says, I have a word from the Lord for you. And yes. I said, yes. hmm, Annie Outlaw. And her husband, Al Outlaw, was standing right there next to her. He said, listen to her, doll. And he had this gruff voice. You know, she knows how to hear from God. And, uh, and she says, you're going to be leaving here. You know, of course, I, after the stamps, of course, I was, I was married for a couple of years, and then I went with Grandpa Jones, you right. know, for a while. Then I left him to go into, into just full-time ministry, and, and I evangelized for a couple of years, and then I started this church. And uh, we had just built the building, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I can finally relax a little bit. Yeah. She says, God's calling you out. Ooh. And she said, you're going to be playing your guitar not only... You're, are you going to be uh, ministering and playing, your, using your, your, your gifts, musical gifts, but uh, you're going to be designing guitars like David did in, at the, at the uh, dedication of the temple. Yes. And you're going to be designing, and you're going to be sent around the world by the leading manufacturers in the business world, in the music business. So there, and I'm going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I'm and I'm just sort of you know brushing my boots out in the you know sand in the parking lot, and that wasn't even paved yet. And I thought, well, thanks, Annie. I'm thinking that's a back burner thing. Yeah. But uh, but when my Doyle Dykes model, I have one in the car. I just brought this Martin in because, but anyway, because I wanted you to see it for one thing because <laughs> you're a guitar guy. But uh, but I I, uh, I remember when my my guitar first came out. Uh, at the NAMM show. So this must have been around February or March that I was in Georgia. And I saw them and I, and I was playing my guitar and she and Al were there. I'm thinking, wow, you know, because I was in Jacksonville, but they were from around Brunswick. So they drove up to Savannah, Georgia. And, uh, and she said, uh, she just looked at me, looked at that guitar, she said, Told you, didn't I? Told you so. <laughs> yeah, and then Alice said, "Yeah, she told you, didn't she, Doyle?" I said, "Boy, you did. I never would have dreamed it." But uh, but that guitar was such a blessing. In fact, um, Greg Allman walked in that very store after that, and they had one of my uh, natural blonde, you know, uh, Doyle Dykes models. And he says, "I need a, I needed a guitar." He said this in a magazine. I needed a, a guitar that would inspire me to pick it up and play because I just about quit playing the guitar, like "Sweet Melissa," the song he wrote. Yeah. And uh, there's a YouTube thing of him playing "Sweet Melissa," one of my signature guitars. Yeah, he bought it. What a compliment! You know, that's a great compliment. But to me, the the power of that is is you have this little lady, and they're all over in churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, they probably wouldn't be heard of if it wasn't for your book. Mm -hmm. and, but they, they're women of prayer. Mm -hmm. They're women of faith. Yeah. They love the Lord. And they, have, they are tuned into the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, there would be no notoriety of any outlaw or out, outlaw mm -hmm. outside of Doyle Docks becoming yeah. 
uh, working with musical instruments, traveling the world, being backed by uh, major uh, uh, music uh, industry uh, producers and manufacturers, and, and, and that word has all come true times 10. Yeah. And that was probably beyond your wildest imaginations. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. woman, what are you talking about? My mind wasn't expanded to that level, you know, and yes. uh, sometimes we have to 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 get that way you know i heard uh, joel you know i was listening to him i got xm on my rental truck out here yeah. and joel was preaching and he said this he had a meeting with this guy he says well i i can give 80 million and he's going you know he'd never even heard of money like that before right. you know that's when he first took over when his dad died yes and uh and he said i started to say well boy, you sure are running some high numbers and the lord just told him to hush he said, just accept it and go on. Mm. And he says that I shut my mouth. I didn't say anything. And he said it was a few years later that we were going to buy the compact center. And when those figures came forth to me, mm -hmm. I didn't think that much about it. It wasn't, uh, un it wasn't out of reach, beyond my reach. Yeah. He says, I knew it, it was a, had to be a God thing. But he says, I had faith for it. And so sometimes our minds need to be expanded on what God can do. Yeah. for us and uh, otherwise we'll just stay well we need to stay a little anyway in yes. some ways we need to com remain humble uh, uh, because I think that's a key to this uh, to the Lord uh, success with the Lord and, yes. and being having his favor but uh, but I think if as long as you remain humble but also let your uh, but think big think bigger yeah. too you know it's like David yeah he killed the lion. Mm -hmm. It's a step. He killed the bear. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine <laughs> military? Yeah. You know, it's from glory to glory. You know, God eventually, through faith and through experience, was able. He was able to to take on those bigger projects, or yeah. you know, a uh, hundred million dollars to renovate the compact center. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal, but you know. No. Earlier, you know, you'll, oh my God, 100 million. Where am I going to get that kind of money? Yeah. I'm out of my, I'm, I'm in the deep waters. Yeah. Well, everybody in the Bible that God, you, you talked about the Hall of Fame in, in Hebrews. Um, you know, it, every, pretty much every one of those people said, Lord, why, why are you talking to me? <laughs> you know, every one of them. They did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and, yeah, that's exactly right. And well, the more we say that and the we're convinced that we're nothing without him, the more you are the very person God wants to use to show how great he is in us. Yeah. Amen. And that's the key to it. You know, it I'm just a guitar player. But when I offer this up to him, it's like the little boy with the, the loaves and the fishes and the, you never know what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you just never know what God can do with it. Amen. I want, I want to move to another experience you had in Texas, okay. kind of bouncing around here. <laughs> I believe uh, you're, at this time your children, I believe Heidi and Haley were, uh, Haley was wanting to go to Belmont and uh, maybe, or maybe it was Heidi or mother was going to Lee University. At the yes. same time, you're on Interstate 20 in Dallas, Texas. That's right. And, uh, yeah. They, you're away from the family, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you needed an intervention from the Lord. I did. I had and to have um, you uh, tell us about that God experience. Well, when I left my church, you know, I, I and went back on the road. I wanted it debt free. In fact, I gave the old Martin that, that I said this was like God spoke to me. Get the biggest thing you have away. Just give it away. Yeah. And I'll bless the church, and I'll, and I'll, you know, and I said, well, I want it debt free. He said, I'll take care of the church. I want you to do that. And it's funny because uh, when I gave the the biggest thing I had away, it wasn't long after that that I really never had to buy a guitar again. Yeah, price. You know, yeah. and, and that's the truth. Yeah. But I didn't know that at the time, and I gave it to Roy Clark, and uh, and there's that's another story, but. Um, but I never put money back. I always put it in the church. I didn't put anything back away from my kids for, for school. 
And uh, I got to thinking about that one day, and I was praying for my kids, and Heidi wanted to go to the Belmont, and then, like you said, Holly was in Lee. I thought, how am I going to do this? And I was scheduled to, uh, for this uh, early morning, uh, they called it a resurrection breakfast, and I just couldn't go to sleep. It was an early morning thing, but I was in this, it was a holiday inn at the time. And I said, Lord, I, would, I just need your help. I said, you know, I've given everything I have. And I was just crying and squalling and, you know, I've given everything I have. I said, I need you to, for you to go to bat for me now. Amen. You know, and I took scriptures out about, you know, how he said he would supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. I said, Lord, I just received that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I believe you are my shepherd and you are my Lord, you know. And so I just started playing the guitar in, in fact. It was, I wasn't trying to write a song. But I started this. out just and then uh, I, I had oh, the window open you could see the outside light coming from the street light and then I just started it's kind of clinky on this guitar and, and I just started to weep because I, I thought where did I hear that And it was uh, a few months later, I was uh, playing with Chet Atkins at this place. He, he invited me to play a, a Cafe Milano. He did kind of like Les Paul did on, in New York. He would, Les Paul would play at the Rhythm on Monday night. Well, Chet would play at the Cafe Milano on Tuesday night in Nashville. And he said, don't want you to join me and come over and play. And so we were backstage and I said, have you, Chet, have you ever done this? He said, well, you, you got your bass. bass and a harpatio harmonics and the and a, and a harmonic there and, and then you what is that a two-finger tremolo I said yeah did I hear you do that because he was my mentor I mean like I said every day since I was a kid I'd he says I never heard anybody do that mm -hmm. and I said good no I didn't say that yeah. but <laughs> I thought it and he said well where did you learn that and I said, well, I was in T Dallas, Texas, and I was praying for my kids, and I just grabbed a guitar, and I just started doing that. Mm -hmm. So I said, so I guess the, I got it from the, the Holy Spirit. So I guess the Holy Ghost knows how to play the guitar. He said, well, I'll say he does. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, I was uh, about a, a month or so after that, I was on the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, my daughter Haley was there. And it's a spontaneous thing. I said, Haley, I want you to sing. She wasn't dressed to go on stage. She was just about 14 or 15. And we did Amazing Grace. And she sang her heart out. And it touched this guy from Texas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he walked up and he had his cowboy hat and a red cowboy shirt and a buckle about as wide as he was and jeans and boots. And, and he was kind of a thin man. And he says, I don't know why I don't know you, but I believe God wants me to be your friend. And he stuck his hand out. And I said, well, I'll be your friend. And, uh, and he says, well, I'm sure Chet's told me about you. And I'm going, Chet Atkins? He said, well, I'm his neighbor. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, and he told me a lot of stories since then. But um, anyway, he said, well, uh, tell me about your family. And so I did. And he says, well, now you have another daughter that's, uh, and we were at the Chet Atkins Appreciation Convention, which was in, going on in Nashville then. Right. And he came out the next day. He said, no, nah, you told about all your kids, but, the, but where's the oldest one? I said, well, she's in Florida right now. She was, you know, visiting relatives. And, uh, 
But, uh, but anyway, uh, but she's, uh, she's going to Nashville. She's looking for a job. She wants to go to uh, college there. And oh, really? He, I said, well, she wants to be a nurse. Well, have her come see me. He says, I'm at the hospital. Everybody knows me. And you know, just ask for me. I've been there for years. I didn't know if he was a janitor or what he did. I had no idea. I didn't think he was a doctor. And so Heidi came in, and I told her that. Why don't you go by and see this man? I met him at the Opry. And, uh, and so she left and was trying out for a job uh, interviewing for, with a daycare center at the mall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I thought she was going to come right back home. Well, she stayed on. And uh, what it was, she went to that hospital because mm -hmm. she said, well, Dad said, go by and see him. And it would be nice to go in the hospital. I want to be a nurse. It'd be my, maybe they'll show me around. Sure. Well, she came in about 3 in the morning, 4 o'clock, something like that, and woke me up. Dad, Dad. And I said, Heidi, is everything okay? You know, and uh, she says, uh, no, everything's great. And she says, I, I, I got a job. I said, what are you talking about? I went to see that man you told me about. His name was Stringfield, Mr. Stringfield. And she said, Dad, they have a whole wing named after him. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't know that. I said, who is this guy? And she said, well, they hired me. I said, for doing what? I, I'm going to be, I'm, uh, as a nurse. I said, she says, isn't that cool? And I said, well, I'm thinking it's scary. You haven't even started, <laughs> no you know, experience. school. No experience, yeah. No, she says, well, no, Dad, it's like after, it's going to be a part of my education. After school, I'll go over there and, and they'll show me. And, uh, and then she said, uh, she started crying. And I said, what's wrong? She said, they're paying for my school, Dad. Oh. <laughs> and so just weeks before, I had no idea what I was going to do. Yeah. And then the Lord, and, and they did. They yeah. did every bit of it. And then she went on to become an anesthetist, uh, and uh, now she's in anesthesia down in uh, Florida. Well, that works scripture down there. in Ephesians really comes to my mind is God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all Doyle Dykes can think. And I, I bet in Doyle or in Ken's mind, we're thinking, well, God, you know, this help my daughter get a job, or, yeah. you know, something, let it work out, and we'll work out some of the money. But God provided the means mm -hmm. to pay for the tuition mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. Uh, just another beautiful God encounter, yeah. how God put that man in your path. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and gave me a new song and a yeah. new lick. Yeah. Well, I was going was yeah. to say, he taught you something. The Holy Spirit taught you something yeah. on the guitar. Well, Jesus said, he shall teach.